All right, so uh, meeting 43. Let's get going. Uh, I don't see any new faces here, so I'll skip this slide. Um, announcements. So we're going to be planning and running a capture flag at the Revolution UC uh, Hackathon. If anybody's interested in chipping in and helping us out with that, we are going to get a working prototype by like next Thursday, but we'll probably have one like this weekend or something. Um, we're going to be using OWASP Juice Box or Juice Shop, which is an open source capture flag um, platform. You can run really cool CTFs in like a Jeopardy kind of style. Uh, so this is, it'll be a really cool, we're going to get a lot of, um, uh, what, 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 what's the word for it? A lot of recognition, I guess, at the hackathon for this CTF. So this would be really good for us. We might see a lot more new faces. Um, Jai, any news on the sport team updates? So today's the last day. If you want to sign up for dodgeball, please sign up on the general link. Tell um, me. If you don't get enough people by tonight. you speak up? I said if we don't get enough people by tonight, we won't be able to play the team uh, or make a team for dodgeball. So if you or any of your friends want to play, please sign up. What are we at? Five. We're at five still? Does nobody else want to play dodgeball? I, I signed up over the weekend. I don't have time. Does it come to me? Huh? Did you fill up? No, either, but it's fine. Yeah. How many do you need? We need time. I'll make time. I, I did it when I put a check mark emoji on the form message. Yeah. What? Like, like, you Ra raise your hands if you did sign up. So that is, I mean, I signed up. That's four of us right there. Who's all, who has all signed up? Can you read them all? All five of us. I think there was one more person. Okay. So, we might not be able to have a team, uh, but it is what it is. We need 10. You guys should sign up. You should sign up. You guys should sign up. Huh? When are they? I don't know. Whenever we can. It's either Mondays or Thursdays in the evening. So, it'll be from yeah. 5 p.m. Those are the two times that we can sign up for. Yeah. So, it's between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. on Thursdays. on Thursdays or... Mondays is the other option. Or Mondays. Okay, so it'll probably be from 5 to 11 p.m. on Thursdays. So if you can make any time for any Thursday, from any time period between 5 and 11 p.m., you should sign up. Because that'd be fun. I want to get out there and play dodgeball, kick some ass. Um, so we're still playing a bit of DEF CON 2018. Uh, we're actually just working on the budget right now. Ryan and Will are going to be working on that. If anybody else wants to help them out, um, please do so. You're going to need a little bit of help. And since we're going to be getting a lot more money in here soon now that we're official, uh, finance is going to be having a good time playing with money. So, uh, yeah. And also, big news, we're finally official. So, it's been a freaking year. And we did it. So, that's just, just such a big deal. Um, we almost, they almost wanted to shut us down. Uh, well, one person at the uh, round table did. Uh, because we were the same as cybercrime cats, but we made a very good argument why we're not, uh, because cybercrime cats isn't really active at all. Um, so it was a unanimous vote, essentially. Uh, everybody in the room voted for us, one person against, and one person abstained because they showed up late. So <laughs> it's basically perfect. Um, so yeah, now we got some really cool uh, opportunities here. These are actually a big deal. Um, for those of you that are undergraduates, freshmen, sophomores, this is huge. This is a paid stipend for 10 weeks with housing provided, a food allowance, and uh, travel funds to work at the, I think it's, yeah, it's Wright State University, and I think they're going to be collaborating with Wright, Sat, Wright, the Wright Pat Air Force Base. Um, so it's going to be doing security over this summer uh, on network security, intrusion detection, wireless sensor network insecurity, internet malware detection analysis and mitigation, software reverse engineering and vulnerability discovery, privacy preserving data mining. So some really cool stuff and it's research and it's paid, which is huge. Um, and I know a lot of you guys, uh, some of you don't co-op in the summer or co-op like maybe in the fall or next spring. This is a really good opportunity and they specifically came out and asked uh, me if anybody in Cyber at UC uh, would like to participate in this opportunity and we could have Vicki Baker, the head of Cyber for Everything at UC, uh, vouch for you into this program. So really cool stuff. If you're interested in this, um, write down this information. Uh, 
if, if you are. So, or take a picture of the screen. Um, and then if you're even more interested, talk to me and then I can get you and introduce you to Vicki Baker and we can maybe sit down and have a little conversation. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really awesome. Uh, another big event that's coming up is ASME uh, Engineering Fest. And this is going to be a, like a three day competition, workshop sessions, like career development. It's just a big three day conference per se for uh, people in the you know, STEM fields uh, who want to learn more about their field or you know, maybe make some good connections. And this is at, I believe, Penn State. Um, yeah, Penn State. And April 13th through 15th. So if you're interested in this, uh, mark that down your calendars, take a picture of it, uh, and we will get more to you on this. But if you register uh, and you're one of the first 50, which we might be one of the first 50 because this is just brand new, I think as of like today I was sent this, um, you can type in that little code there and then I think you can get a, uh, a free ticket. So I should, uh, should sign up. I haven't done that yet. So we better not hit 50 yet. If you can't uh, see the code, it's EFT East 50, no spaces, all caps. Yeah, e Engineering Fest, yeah, 50, East 50. So that's really cool. Uh, anything for public affairs other than our sport updates and stuff? No. No? Okay. Not much, but if you're interested in joining the committee, please come talk to me. Yeah, so definitely. Cool, and now we're moving on to weekly content. Mr. Corey. All right, so uh, the thing on the left new. is your yeah. You go. Okay, cool. So uh, first story for the week, uh, we can thank Hayden for this. Uh, Unicode characters crashing Apple devices. Uh, I do have a short little demo video I'll be able to show you guys in a minute. But basically, what was happening is basically in any sort of uh, text reading application on an Apple device that includes their mail, Gmail, uh, text messaging, Slack, Instagram, uh, any of those sorts of applications where you would read text. If a one of two specific characters in a language called Telugu, I have no clue what it is, sorry. Uh, if one of their two Unicode characters came through, it would uh, crash the app and the device would have would restart and when you would try to open the app in the future, it would pop up and then immediately crash and close. And you would have to completely uninstall and reinstall the application. So the uh, problem has now been patched, but this, this was pretty dangerous because people could then mass spam it through social media, you know, just go to Facebook and just, you don't even need to know who they are, just send messages, just this one Unicode character, just everybody you can pops up, they read it, crash, boom, there goes the Facebook app and they have to uninstall and reinstall it. Yeah. Please don't actually pull up the text yet because I haven't, I haven't installed the patch yet on my laptop. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not actually going to pull up the text. And here, I believe it is this last, I hope I can pull a link still. Can um, I? Maybe unfull, maybe hit exit and then click here. And then click the link. Control click. Cool. Yeah. Open link, there it is. Right below that. I'm trying to open link. Down, down. Up, up. I see there. Okay. Sorry, it's not actually on the screen in front of me, so. Down here somewhere, if this is the right article. Well, <laughs> that's so. wrong. Uh, I guess it is not. Uh, this one? Dab to the, nope, that's to the left. Okay. Let's go one more. It's one of these two. If not, I will repost the link later tonight if I don't actually have it. Uh, big ad. That is a very big ad. Two ads. Here it is. Has the Verge whitelisted for some reason. So here's someone getting their uh, text messaging app crashed on their phone when it loads. Oh, you know what? Tweet embedded tweet videos are weird for me. Scroll down and click the link to the tweet, and then it'll watch one? it on Twitter. No, the click the timestamp. 
in the tweet. Okay. But, uh, for some reason, embedded Twitter videos never play for me, so I just have to click it and figure out why that happens. So there's this text message or this message, which is a singular character coming through. It looks weird. It's not like a regular Arabic character. So it doesn't immediately crash the phone, but when he tries to bring up the application, <laughs> that's great. And it comes to his lock screen. <laughs> and now just watch every time he tries to open the app. It does nice. That. Huh. So uh, this is actually following up on the heels of another similar problem that was happening with Apple coming in to text messages because in January this year they had a similar problem with a URL being sent that when you open the text message and this URL was read, it would do the exact same thing. You good? Okay. So oh, I didn't uh, make it full screen. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, so bunch of links. Uh, this second one from the bottom here, I guess, was the one that actually has the demonstration. Um, so I recommend checking that out. Uh, the third link, I believe, is the one that has the URL. Okay, so uh, Siemens is leading a global cybersecurity initiative. And so what they have done is they've put out this thing called a Charter of Trust. They work together with IBM, Airbus, T-Mobile, a, bu a bunch of other groups in order to put together this charter. And the idea is that hopefully this charter will be used to create a standard for cybersecurity policies across the world. And the idea is we are putting cybersecurity as the primary focus in business and government in order to protect individuals uh, prevent, you know, attack, cyber attacks on infrastructure, that sort of thing. So Siemens has really taken a step up trying to lead the world to the next step in cybersecurity and to uh, show everyone just how important it is. So a big round of applause for them. If anyone who doesn't really know a lot about what Siemens does, I'm sure AJ can go on for a while on them, maybe later or something. Uh, so that's the link at the bottom there if you want to read up a little bit more on that later. And this last one, the uh, SWIFT network was recently used in a bank heist where $2 million were stolen from India's City Union Bank. The uh, SWIFT network is, stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. And what it is is banks or other financial institutions use it to send messages and to uh, transfer money between each other, basically. And uh, the SWIFT network is kind of under fire right now because there was another theft last Friday where six million dollars were stolen from a Russian bank. So uh, there, that shows that if there is a vulnerability, either these guys really know how to use it and they're applying it like crazy, or there's a lot of people out there who have figured out what this is. Uh, right now, at this point, we don't have reason to believe it was an inside job. Um, but just to give an idea of the sheer amount of money that can be done in just one singular transfer, like one one financial transfer that they did stop was for over five hundred thousand dollars in just one message was to say, "Hey, transfer this money," and it almost made it through. So there's a, there's a lot of money that goes through the SWIFT network, and so if it's vulnerable, it's a big problem. I've got several different links here. Uh, the first link is the story I talked about. Uh, the second one is linking just a little bit more information and a little bit about the Russian heist. And the third link is just about what SWIFT is and kind of how it works, if you want to read up more on that. I think that's it. Cool. All right. Yeah. I'm going to do my uh, cross-site scripting talk now. So let's see. Let me switch the slides over. So... Um, this is, if you've never heard of it, this is supposed to be sort of like an introduction to what cross-site scripting is. So um, let's jump right into it. The first thing is uh, all the links that I talk about, the actual slides I'm reading off of everything is available at that URL, shift.io slash talk slash XSS. Um, and uh, I'll have a demo, interactive demo at the end. So uh, if you want to pull up that link now, uh, it might be useful. 
Um, so what is XSS? It's, uh, it's a, a vulnerability in websites, web pages. The attacker writes some malicious code uh, in JavaScript, makes a vulnerable website serve that code to other visitors of the website. Um, and it's, it was the most prevalent in the mid 2000s, but it's still, you still see every day there was a huge uh, one on eBay uh, last year, for example, and it's, it's still, there's among smaller websites, it's crazy popular. So I think it's really valuable when you're talking about a vulnerability to understand the history of the technology and how we got to the point where we have such a vulnerability. So originally, um, late 1980s, Tim Berners-Lee had the idea for the web, first website 1990, 1993 we had the first web browser, and then in 1995 people started latching onto the web and it was really starting to blow up and everyone wanted to uh, add features up to it, particularly the people at Netscape were just adding a new feature like every five seconds. Um, if you're a web developer you know that a lot of what Netscape added was, was kind of garbage um, and so they just, they just added um, they, they were just adding features with, with uh, no, uh, with no, without a care in the world. Uh, and it, just to give a demo of what the web looked like at this point, this is the very first website ever. They, they put it back online now. And if I look at the code of it, you can see here, let's see if I make this a little bigger. You can see it's very, very simple. Like, uh, like you have a heading, H1, links are A tags. It's, it's all very, very simple. St stuff and there's 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 not a whole lot all it's meant to do is literally be a storage of data it's not meant to be like an interactive thing or well it is interactive but it just you click on links and go to them and it doesn't have it doesn't look pretty it doesn't do anything fancy it's just very very simple and so um let's see i'm gonna get back to this um yes what was the link on the previous slide um i don't have one i'll go back in the okay that's, uh, yeah, if you just go shift.io slash talks, there will be a link to XSS, so, yeah. If someone wants to post that in the Slack, that'd be super. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, and then, so, new features were getting added, like, there was no tomorrow. Uh, they were just sort of going crazy. No one was really thinking about security. Uh, people were just like, I want to do more with this, because, like, Microsoft started shipping uh, Internet Explorer 3 and, like, Windows 3 or something, and... And people were like, everyone has this, we got to add stuff to it. And so um, new stuff like uh, CSS and JavaScript was added. I put together a simple page. This, look, now there's some styles on the page. This box looks pretty. If I look at the source code, um, you can see we've got rules saying, like, make the headings blue and italic. Make the box have a, a red border and be 400 pixels wide and have the text in the center. And then for JavaScript, I made this little button that counts how many times you click it. And you can see I've just got some code uh, in this script tag that says uh, every time it finds the button up here, my button, it says every time you click it, make this count go up by one and update the counter, which is right here. And so it's we're just we're starting to see a lot more stuff be possible on the web. Um, and so then if I uh, let's see. So XSS is sort of the natural consequence of us adding all these new things, adding interactivity, adding it where people can put stuff in the page, whereas originally it was meant to just be controlled, like a webmaster writes the page and that's it. It's supposed to just be, that's how it was originally designed to work, but as uh, adding these new features was just sort of the natural consequence uh, that we would have XSS. So here's, uh, uh, like, uh, sorry, here's a, a demo I made, which is like supposed to be like on some website, their contact us form. And so like you'd say, hello there, um, and submit that. And the website just spits it back to you. And if this was a real, if this wasn't a fake page that I made for a demo, it would, uh, have sent me an email, but I didn't actually code that in. And so the problem is that if we look at the source code, my message, hello there, is just right in the middle of all this code that the web developer wrote. With And it's normally you'd want it to be separate so that the computer doesn't get mixed up. So the problem is I can then, uh, if I write a message like with all these, this HTML in it, instead of just writing hello there and submit it, then my formatting gets through. And uh, you can see I was able to do things in the, the, uh, the web page that the web developer not intend me to do. And... Um, even worse is if I put in some JavaScript. Uh, I put in a script tag that 
just throws a pop-up. And actually, you will see Chrome now will not let you load the page where I've served my own JavaScript. In order to give a good demo, I added a feature to turn off Chrome's thing. I made the server. And so you can see uh, it's a pop-up, and it's still my, assuming like I logged into this website and had authentication details, it stole my authentication details, and it could have, I've just made it show them in a pop-up, but it could have like sent them to my server or something, and I would own your account now. Um, and then, then, so you might think, well, if Chrome has that thing that blocks it, then we're okay. Uh, here I decided to give an example of how Chrome's thing is not perfect. Um, Chrome, Firefox, they all have that thing that blocks stuff, but um, it only blocks JavaScript. So here what I've done is, um, you don't have to worry about the details of what this code is doing, but essentially it's it's creating a new a box that covers the entire page, and then I put my own content in it. So if I submit this, you can see the entire page is now covered with this box that set, that tells you, you you've been logged out to due to, act, due to inactivity. Please come log back in. And this link is one that the hacker controls, and you can see I made it go uh, I made it go here, but it I, it could have been a fake login page, so. Uh, this is without turning off Chrome's security auditor, so it's even even though there is some level of protection built in, it's it doesn't block everything. It just blocks the most egregious failures. Um, I'm going. I feel like I'm going a little fast. Does everything make sense? Does anyone have any questions? You should explain cookies to everybody. Yeah, yeah. What I was showing there, the um, <laughs> I keep getting this pop up. Um, here, let me submit something else so that pop up goes away. So what I was doing in this in this uh, demo that makes the pop-up come up is um, I was showing the users cookies, which are just when you log into a website, um, what it does is it uh, it puts a cookie on your machine, which is just you can see it, I have a cookie called username, a cookie called auth token, and then some other ones that I think are like Google Analytics, and uh, those are just. Uh, it's, it's how the web server knows that you are the guy who just logged in a second ago. Because otherwise, it would be every time you visited a new page, you sort of show up as a new request. And without the cookie, it wouldn't know that you were the same person who made the previous request. So that's just how it keeps track of you being logged in. And so if you, if you steal someone's cookies and run them on your own machine, then the, machi the, the website will think that you are the person you stole the cookies from. So you can impersonate someone else that way. It's sort of like stealing your password, but not quite as bad. It's because um, as soon as you log out, the cookies don't work anymore. But it's they work as long as you don't log out, so it's still pretty bad. Can you walk through uh, with everybody on like this site uh, some basic cross-site scripts? Um, just instead of auto-populating it. Yeah, yeah. Some of us can follow along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll. So here, I, I. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll break it down. So this is um, JavaScript runs by you put a script tag into the page, like I was showing on the. Um, Where's that demo I have? Nope, not that one. <laughs> oh, Eric Astley. Um, here, let me find it from my page. So on this page, you can see that the, the JavaScript I had here, it's in a script tag, and that means everything inside here isn't content, it's code. Um, and so um, you can see that it's just very simple. Like, if you've written any programming language, this should look relatively familiar to you. So. It's, um, it's saying, this is the button, button on click, run this little bit of code, and it's just a thing that increments a counter, and then goes to the counter on the page and updates it. And so you can see I've done, um, in this one I've done, there's a function built into JavaScript called alert that just pops up an obnoxious little pop-up. Um, and so that's, I literally just put, that's the only bit of code I put in this script tag. And so, um, oh yeah, let me disable Chrome's, uh, Auditor again, um, and so if I look at the source code of this page, um, you can see where it says your comment. It's just plopping that script tag again, and the the web browser doesn't know that it's it's supposed to be a comment and not actual JavaScript to run. So um, it's it's running it and causing the the problem. Uh, does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> All right, uh, let me see, let me get this back up here. Um, so let's see. So, um, where's my 
side. Oh yeah, there are two types of XSS cross-site scripting. Um, there's non-persistent and persistent. That page I just showed was an example of non-persistent or reflected, which is where um, it only shows the like the code that you put into the website only comes back immediately once you visit that page. So like that contact page, if someone else went to that contact page, they wouldn't see my message, they just see the contact page without anything because it only shows up right after you click submit. Um, it, it doesn't get stored anywhere, it's just, it just shows up the one time. When you refresh the page, it's not there anymore. Persistent XSS is the, the, the deadlier of the two and it's where instead of um, it just existing in that one page for that one moment, it gets stored in a database or something and everyone who visits that page every single time will see the code and it'll, that's how you really run into problems and you, you have like thousands of users getting infected. So let's get into examples. The Sammy worm is probably the most famous example of uh, an XSS attack. It's a persistent attack and it was back in, what is it? Uh, 2005, October 4th, 2005, Sammy Kamkar, he was 19 years old, he decided he wanted more friends on MySpace. So he wrote a bit of code on his profile that um, would basically, it would send a friend request from your account to his account, um, and then it would add a message to your like list of heroes on your profile that said, Sammy is my hero. And then once it did that, it would copy all the code that did that to your profile. So now anyone who visited your profile would have that run on it. And so it was like a worm, it would spread exponentially and in about, uh, what was it? It was five hours, uh, it spread, he had a million friend requests. And uh, MySpace had to go down for two or three hours to uh, <laughs> fix the vulnerability, but, and he ended up, he actually, he got raided by the Secret Service a couple months later. He, did, he had to pay a $20,000 fine, he had three years probation with no commu computer access, and he had to do 720 hours of uh, community service, so. Yeah, yeah, that was one of the specific terms of his probation was that he couldn't use a computer. Yeah, so uh, be, be careful with XSS is, is one of the lessons here, but also the lesson is that no one's safe, and in particular, MySpace was like completely caught off guard. They had some protections in place. Uh, if you, he, I, I recommend reading his uh, write-up because it's, it's pretty funny the way he writes it. He wrote it when he was 19, so he's, he was very goofy with it and stuff, but um, he, he like he has a technical write-up where he goes through, here's the thing MySpace did to block people from doing something like this. Here's how I got around it. Um, and so MySpace, this was actually before companies really had like security rapid response teams, and this was sort of the birth of it when MySpace realized that they needed to be ready to respond to threats in an instant like this. Um, another example that I want to get into, this one was, uh, 2014, and this one's pretty amusing. It was a tweet that would retweet itself, um, which is uh, anyone who saw this tweet, it would, uh, if you looked at it in TweetDeck, not if you looked at it in the Twitter app or Twitter.com, but if you used the, the Twitter client called TweetDeck, it would, um, it would retweet itself to your account. And it ended up being retweeted by like New York Times, BBC Breaking News. It had 83,000 retweets at its height, you can see right here. And so um, this one actually, since it's a tweet, the code is so short that it, uh, I can actually go through it. So it creates a script tag like I've been talking about and it puts this class XSS on it. And the reason it does that is immediately the first line of code, what it does is first it says, find the element on the page with the class XSS. That's what this bit is doing right here. And then go to its parents, um, which is like the elements that it is inside of and find the second one, which is probably, um, you'd have to look at the page, but the second parent of that is probably the box that contains the entire tweet on the page. And then it says find a tags, which is link tags. So find links, then find the second one. It's second because we're counting from zero. And if you look down here, here are the links that are in this box. First one is reply, second one is retweet. So it says click that second link. And then semicolon, so new line of code. Um, when you click the retweet button, you get a little pop-up that says, are you sure you want to retweet this? So it does another query to find that button, and then it clicks that button. So then it sends off the tweet, and then just because he had room for more text, he made it pop up an obnoxious little alert pop up, XSS and tweet tag. And then he ends the script tag, and then he puts a little heart. Apparently the vulnerability 
was it would only, uh, they had XSS protection in take place, but apparently ending your message with like a heart emoji somehow turned that off or something. Um, it was some sort of weird vulnerability where like having a specific emoji in a specific place would cause the XSS protection to go off. And so, yeah, this was, uh, this was pretty catastrophic that when it went out, it was, um, the guy did not get in any trouble for it though. I think his account got temporarily banned, but you can still go look at this tweet even. It's still up. I think I have a link to it on my, uh, my webpage. So, um, yeah. Will it still be retweeted? Or no, it will not. They have fixed it. It's, it's, yeah, it was only if you use TweetDeck specifically that it would be retweeted. Everything else, you would just see all the code like you're seeing it here. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's still there. Just it's, it's neutralized. Um, let's see. So um, those are just a few examples. Here are some more companies that have had uh, publicly reported on XSS vulnerabilities. Um, I had a lot of fun making this slide. Um, it's it's pretty much like anyone can have the vulnerability. It's it's there have been so many of them. Um, there's I mentioned eBay had a bad one where people were making a a, a fake login page that to fish people. Um, uh, I you could I have there's a giant list of links on my website with details on all of these, so uh, you can you can check them out in detail if you want. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's a pretty widespread vulnerability. And so the, the main ways to prevent XSS, I, I just wanted to cover briefly, are you basically, basically all you need to do for like 90% of the time is you need to get rid of these five characters, which are the ones that let you create like a script tag or like a JavaScript function. You, you do, like these are the two characters that let you start and close a script tag. These are the ones that let you do other stuff. And so getting rid of these mostly solves it. But you need to, there are other cases where you need to consider. For example, um, if you ask someone for a URL for an image, um, then you need to make sure that URL is a real URL and not a thing that says JavaScript colon alert blah, blah, blah. Because uh, you, can, you can have a URL actually be a JavaScript function. And uh, one of the best ways to, to make sure you've done it correctly is to just not do it at all. If you use a modern web framework, um, like, uh, if you're using PHP, it'd be like uh, uh, Symfony or Laravel or CodeIgniter. Or, there's a, literally a million of these. Um, just they will take care of it for you. Just follow their instructions. Let them take care of XSS because if you try and do it yourself, you're more likely to screw it up. This is a good blog post about uh, being careful. And so um, now I want to uh, do an interactive demo. Um, and uh, I have created a fake company's uh, website. What is this? What's that? Oh, that's my, that's oh okay, my here. Yeah, I'll leave that open. Yeah. Um, so this is here. Let me make this a little smaller. Uh, this is Widgets Incorporated's website. Uh, they want you to register an account on their website. Hey! And they hey! have done some basic XSS prevention uh, or XSS protection. But uh, I, have, I have made a critical mistake somewhere in this page. And, uh, the idea is there's this list of users, like anyone who registers an account will show up here. This is on, is this uh, a link to get to this on your website? Yes, and uh, the link is also um, bit.ly slash Hayden XSS register, uh, or it's on the website. Are you watching all of this quick on your Huh? Are you watching this all quick? No, no, I, I, oh, I could be. I could go look at my logs, but, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, your, your goal with this is to make it so that up here where it says the XSS champion is no one, you want to make it so that it says it's your name. And I've, I've made it a little easier for you. There's already a JavaScript function defined on the page called declare champion. So all you have to do is declare champion uh, your name and pass in a string of your name. Um, so you don't, have to, you don't have to figure out how to, how to edit things on the page. You just have to figure out how to get JavaScript to run. So here, I'll, uh, I'll refresh to see if anyone submitted anything yet. Which, which one is on your it's, um, I'm gonna post it on Slack. Yeah. It's, it's also just bit.ly slash Hayden XSS register. Sorry? Uh, it's called declare uh, champion, and then you pass in your name. So um, I I am uh, I'm not sure how difficult this is going to be. This might I'm worried it'll be uh, a little tricky. So I might give hints in a few minutes if people are having uh, trouble. 
But oh yeah, I forgot to talk about this. But there is a um, OWASP has an XSS filter evasion cheat sheet, which I the, the link for it is up on the the screen right now. And the, the cheat sheet might give you a few hints on how to uh, evade this. It, it basically has a list of like possible strings that might break things. Um, yeah. So if there are any questions, please let me know. I'd love I'll, I can come around and help people or whatever. Um, Huh? Oh yeah, and please please don't try to uh, break the page in other ways than changing the XSS champion. There's sort of there's no way to make it so that there's only it's only a little bit vulnerable. The page is either entirely vulnerable or not at all. So you could completely nuke the page if you wanted. Please don't. <laughs> please don't ruin the demo for everyone else. <laughs> um, please don't like run slow Loris against my server if you remember from last week or whatever. Uh, <laughs> huh? Because you were supposed to jam. Yeah, that that that's very true. Yeah. Has anyone submitted yet? Yeah, I did. Let's see, it's not loading the new Yeah, I did. Yeah. Why is it not showing up? I tested this, I swear to God. Why is it not showing up? Did, did, you, did it give you a message back? You are user ID number blah? It gave like a green pop-up. Yeah, it says user number one. Why is it not? Are you kidding me? I tested this the crap out of this. Does it need all? Uh, no, you you do need to have the required fields filled, but um, not the rest of them. Give me. Um, the house can I bring? <laughs> you just put that function in the script text. Uh, but I have some filtering in place, so you'll have to be uh. A little bit clever. That's why. Oh no, it's not even registered. It's showing registered users. Of course, it would fit. Well, live demos, gotta love them. Someone, someone new came in. Oh, you're up talking. They leave already? Oh, okay. Anyone know him? No? Hey! It's a newcomer. It's fine. Just walk yeah, by. from the other side. Cybercrime cats. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> come in here. Spy hunts. I didn't see him, but I might know him. I told somebody that they should come to see him. Hey! 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 So after after this, once we get this working, or we'll give it a little bit more time to get it working, we'll uh, we'll wrap up with uh, the password. Password cracking. You want to leave that? Cool. And then we'll be good. Hey. That's all. Then it will work. No, it's not. So for as long as the passwords are included. Oh, it's last time. Yeah. Did you see what I? Uh, made a post too. The, it was the uh, the guy that uh, runs a website by the phone or something. Yeah. yeah hey, hey. Did you post that? Yeah. I posted that. Yeah. Yeah. So the guy. How many of you people know about the website Have I Been Phone? Yeah. If you don't, you should totally go to Have I Been Phone right now and start typing in your information. Um, but Have I Been Phone? Uh, the guy who writes that site keeps track of all password dumps and like recent, um, I guess, how do I want to say it? Uh, like leaks, leaks of passwords and stuff like that. And uh, if you put your stuff in, you'll see if your email has popped up in a leak and say if your password is known 
to uh, people from, from Elite. And he just, he doesn't release his password lists, but he just released a half a billion hey. passwords oh, no, that he will um, cost reference. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool because you know, last week we were doing password hash cracking and we were using hey. Rock U and we were using uh, the sec lists top 100 million. Well, now we have uh, 500 million hey. passwords that you can use as a word list, uh, which is really cool. I've been found. You should probably change your information. It's found my email address, IP, name, and physical address. Oh my gosh. <laughs> from uh, what? From, they'll tell you where your list was. River City Media Spam List. I wasn't on that spam list. Huh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I've been pwned so many times. It's like ridiculous when I pull that up. Let's see how many times I've been pwned with other emails. I pwned in this one? Wow, that's my spam email and I haven't been pwned on there. This, yeah, let's try this email I've used for junk since 2010. Oh, wait, I have an idea. I have an idea what it might be. Take a chance. Try again. Why are they rate limiting us? I can only hey. do two within They probably go by IP address in text description. And we'll probably get all of Aha! I think that's not the issue. Did you? I, I just pushed a few things. I didn't know Google patched the uh, good old alert. The JavaScript alert, the alert, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Firefox did. Firefox didn't know yet? No, I didn't know what it means. Exactly. Yes, okay. Okay, it works. Yay! Oh. Okay, cool. So you need to make yours the champion? Yes, the you, need to, you need to insert, Stop. inject a bit of code that runs this bit of, bit of code. Except with your actual name. on what people are submitting. What was the fix name? Huh? What it was, was uh, the, the database file. Uh, the permissions got reset when I... Uh, Aha! Yep. I change. I have filtering in place that gets rid of these characters so you can see if I... Whoop, that's not what I wanted to So you have to uh, escape them. Oh god, it's so hard to see. Probably. There's like this... Oh, oh, I know. So if you look in here, I have filtering in place that changes those angle brackets to these symbols that show up as angle brackets. So you have to be cleverer than just dropping a script tag in. Did I win? It might be onto something though. I will say that. Which one did you do? Huh? Blake <laughs> <laughs> You didn't put in the phone number though. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's right there? One more, four, 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 four. One more? One Call more? Four. 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 Oh man, someone's made the table too wide for the screen now. <laughs> oh, and they got a profile picture. What do they do? <laughs> Jeez, look at all this. Wait, why is the table? The table is uh, is gets wider because someone put in an, an email address noxiously formatted like this. It's so cool, like I'm blue night. <laughs> Has anyone won yet? No one. I don't think so. I, would you recommend people to? I think Bailey or whoever did this one got very close. Yeah, it's 
Oh, wasps, XXX. Yeah, the, the, the uh, filter, yeah. they have a, a cheat sheet here. It's uh, I, I made a short URL for it. It's also on the, the my web page. Uh, but that'll that has some hints of, of to maybe give you some ideas. And then also, if you if you poke in the source code of this page and look at what this person did, they got very close to getting it right. I will say that much. So if you if you hit uh, on on Windows, it's com uh, Control U. On Mac, it's Command Option U. You can view the source code of the page, and you can mm -hmm. see all the submissions in here. Oh my God, this is turning into such a mess. <laughs> It's a string, right? So you pass like a function, you pass like. Uh, but you might. It, the problem is strings are typically defined with either apostrophes or quotes, and I have both of those filtered out. So you might see if you can come up with a cleverer way to put in a string. Oh, cool. Shoot. By the way, the page will keep, it'll be whoever's the most recent submission for a champion will end up being the thing on top. So even if someone gets it, you can still keep trying to do it yourself. And you'll be able to uh, overtake them as champion, which isn't really how it works. The first person the, should be the real champion, but it's the most recent person since I have them listed from top to bottom. Why don't you just reverse the order? Because uh, I, I wanted people to be able to keep trying it even after someone uh, got it. <laughs> I thought I, I did it deliver. Yeah, I wanted people to be able to try. So even if you reverse it, you can't just keep stacking on top of each other? Uh, well, it, it'll just, it, it's just, it, it's running in order. So if a JavaScript function here changes it to Chris, then it'll run in order and go to here, and then that'll change it to Bob. Okay. So it'll. You, you might even see it, um, depending on how fast the page loads, like rapidly cycle through yeah. Chris, Bob, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I see someone's copying stuff from the, the filter list. AJ, let me know if, we're, if if you want me to whenever you want me to like wrap it up, and I can sort of give the answer. Well, I mean, we can always just move the. Uh, we can do it next week too. All right. Yeah. Whatever. Just we'll just we'll, we'll just do this for tonight and make sure everybody kind of understands how it's done, and we'll uh, we'll recap the password hash cracking uh, next week, and we'll as we move on with recon. Does that sound good for everybody? Cool. All right. Hmm, hmm, people are getting mighty close. Is there control option? What is it on Mac? What? What's it's that? command option U. Use the source code. So I'm doing that. I just do this okay. Yeah, that works too. Um, but th that doing view source lets you view literally what the server sent over the wire, whereas when you do inspect, that shows you how Chrome has interpreted it, which won't be exactly the same. And in particular, the XSS vulnerability will be harder to understand when, when it's messed up the HTML. And, so you can click on console? Uh, so you put, if you right click on the page and do view page source, that shows you. This is literally what the server sent over the wire. So sometimes that's more useful to look at. We have a champion now. Two more people. Hell oh, yeah. We need two more people? We need two more people for dodgeball. Sign up, god dang it. How are we going to crush everybody if we don't have a team? 
All right, I'll give, I'll give one hint. Um, you can see most of these tags, I use double quotes uh, to, for like properties, like here you can see I have quotes. Uh, but in order to make this vulnerable, uh, I use single quotes for the image source on the profile picture. I use single quotes. I thought you were sanitizing single quotes. Uh, I am sanitizing, I, didn't, I, am, I used uh, PHP's default sanitization function. Um, which doesn't which doesn't by default do single quotes. Wow. <laughs> you have to you have to specifically enable it. And uh, I was a bad programmer and did not. Sorry, I think I did say I sanitize single quotes. That's uh yeah, that's my bad. You work for Apple? <laughs> what? Why'd you say that? Because they had that vulnerability. Oh yeah, the password. Oh yeah, like... literally, like like I, I I had so much fun putting together the links for for this slide. It's just literally like like it's it's you just if you like type in like XSS and then you're like I don't know maybe banks and then you'll find fifty banks. It's and uh, maybe social networks. You'll find fifty social like <laughs> you just have to you have to be more specific in your query to find results because everyone's had XSS. Yeah. Did you go I can't believe Jira's on that. Yeah. That's surprising. You'd like to think like McAfee and Semantic would be better. Well, those are like malware companies. Yeah, but still. <laughs> Hotmail had one was uh, was sort of the hotbed for the earliest XSS vulnerabilities, like in the late '90s, early 2000s. Someone tried uploading a full name. <laughs> Nathan Cooper. Do we have a champion yet? Is the name gonna need to be in quotes? For example, I can't remember. Um, strings have to be in quotes if you define them directly. I'm going to give another hint. If you use your browser's inspector tools, which is like you right click on a field and hit inspect, in Chrome it definitely works, and in Firefox I know there's something similar. You get uh, a view of the, oh god, get rid of this crap, the HTML of the page, and um, you might be getting errors where it says, please enter a correct URL, but if you change the type from URL to text, oops, uh, on this attribute right here, nope, I don't want to edit that, please let me. I, it's so hard to do this on this projector screen, my God. Yeah, I know it is, isn't it? Did my browser just freeze or something? What the heck's going on? All right, first. Let's refresh. Okay. So if I go here, inspect on this field, and if I change the type from URL to uh, why is right clicking not working? Well, if you if you right click this, hit edit attribute, and change it from URL to text then Chrome won't get mad at you for putting in something that isn't a real URL. So the JavaScript include, you can't use the brackets, is that going to work too bad? Um, you can use apostrophes. So those are not getting filtered because I use PHP's bad default filtering. So. Mm. The most annoying part about this is there's no autofill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've made it so that only a few fields are required. And you can literally, uh, as long as your email has like an at symbol in it, um, and every other character has at least one character in it, that's all you really need. Who's obsessed with the Regis? God. <laughs> Someone keeps submitting like emails like I love Regis and Regis Philbin is the best. <laughs> what? 
So are you sanitizing the crocodile symbols from the image? Uh, I'm sanitizing them in all fields. But only quotes, ampersands, and then alligator brackets, that before you want, angle brackets, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> yeah. All right, who put the dick? Is on YouTube, by the way? Yeah, YouTube. <laughs> See, now you're not going to get the ad revenue because you need not. <laughs> this is explicit pornography right here, clearly. This, this ASCII dick. <laughs> All right, you, do you guys want me to, to give the answer? I give up. Huh? Yes, of course, yeah, All right, so I'm going to, since this is going to work, I'm going to do my email. It's my super secure password. It's password. Uh, let's see. And then, so all these fields, you can't really do much, um, but the, the uh, image URL um, in the, the source code here. It gets instead of being in like in an HTML element, it is inside of like the attribute here, which means you have a little bit more that you can do. And in particular, it happens to be a URL, so that you can um, you can pass in if you a URL that starts with JavaScript colon will then treat everything after that as JavaScript. So um, lead this should work if I just say JavaScript colon declare champion. The new single quotes, um, and actually, if I had been um, filtering single quotes, you could get around this by I actually pre-prepared this. There's a way in in JavaScript to create strings without using quotes. It's by int manually typing out all the ASCII characters, doing string dot from car. But uh, I didn't filter out apostrophes, so you didn't have to go to this this length. But you can see this is the the ASCII code for capital H. Lowercase a, lowercase y, lowercase d, lowercase e. That that method right there is used so often in um, PowerShell like payload delivery command lines. Like that was a daily occurrence. It's what you see all the time when you're triaging uh, alerts. At least uh, I used to do SQL injections with that. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is how you can how you can put in a string without a single quote mark. So this would be this would be on hard mode if I had blocked apostrophes as well. But the quotes weren't even working because I've tried. Yeah, the use quotes. Yeah, the use single. Quotes. Yeah, I, use single I use quotes. Let's go through. I know I tested this and it worked. So um, did mine not, not straight up not working? Let's see. Um. Okay. Um. The, let's see. I'm guessing that. Uh, Chrome is blocking it, but uh, the the actual uh, the hard mode way to do it then is um, here. Let me let me put this up on screen. Uh, uh, when an image fails to load, if you give it an invalid URL, it will. Here, let me make this bigger. It will then uh, if there's an on error function defined, then it will run that JavaScript. So um, if you uh, put a fake URL, ASDF I just put, and then in the quotes, which means you're now out of the URL and you're into the rest of the tag, and then space on air equals and then put some other crap, then it'll uh, run that when it fails to load. And you put in a URL that doesn't exist. So it's always going to fail. This is You'll, you'll see this on the OWASP cheat sheet a lot. They, they take advantage of the on air thing. So if you if I put all that in here um, and have this run on air, then it should go. Oh, whoops, I gotta fill out this crap guy. Yeah, exactly. Oh, shut up, Chrome. Oh, let's see. A is letting me edit this. Time. So, whoops, that's the wrong field. Aha, text. And now Chrome will let me submit. And now if I go to the user list, 
I'm the champion. <laughs> show, show that command line again. Uh, what command line? The, the one with the on air. Um, yeah, yeah, here, let me go back to This is just a, whoop. This is not the command line, this is just a text header. Oh, that's my homework. You don't need my homework. Um, Plagiarize! <laughs> here we go, here's it. So this is this is what I did, and, and there's a space here where it's showing this line break, that's not an actual line break. Here, maybe I'll make it a little, a little smaller so we can do that. Do you, so you don't even have you don't even have to do the from car code in there though. Uh, the code doesn't work. Um, the problem. Oh, the reason I did the from car code is since I'm using a single quote here, you can't use single quotes inside of single quotes because then it'll. Uh, <laughs> there's no way it can tell which one's the end and which one's inside. So you had to um, do it this way. So AST. So yeah, I was I was worried I made this a little hard for. I just here's what XSS is now. <laughs> Do this uh, tricky one, um, but sorry, <laughs> I had the I had to get this demo ready like an hour ago. So. <laughs> awesome. Let's see if anyone else has taken over my title as champion. Because if you do it now, whoever's the last one on the page, uh, it'll do that one. Because your name wasn't even showing up for me. Now it's G. AJ is a wiener. <laughs> they were trying to say If you have JavaScript disabled, it'll still say no one. Oh, I don't like That's why. God dang it. What? I have JavaScript disabled. <laughs> yeah, XSS attacks are entirely JavaScript. So if you're. I, I didn't think to mention that because uh, most people don't disable JavaScript, but I'm, I suppose I am in the cybersecurity group, and some people might disable JavaScript. <laughs> we, we should just leave that as our new logo for the chapter. <laughs> no, mine's not showing up, and I don't have JavaScript. So, well, it, is, is this all of us submitting, or is it just move it alternating through? What it, it does is all of them are running, um, so it should normally be the. Um, what the, the way it works is since it's running on load, it's what order the, the browser tries to load those images in is sort of arbitrary based on what the browser feels like doing. So whichever image it tries to load last, that person's message will win. So it's every time you reload, since there's multiple people doing it, you'll get a different message. <laughs> That's awesome, man. You put, you put the, uh, Normally, you don't have a web page where you're expecting like ten different people to be doing XSS attacks simultaneously. Is that you experimenting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to experiment. Yeah. <laughs> no, mine's not showing any name. It's just saying no one. Um, I like your what you did there, Chris, too. Open. What do you have this date right? I don't have any of it. Your ampersand LT into LT. Like, uh, can you open the uh, Can you open the JavaScript? The inspection. Do you have like? I really want to do like JavaScript. The email update. Yeah. Um. We went to their website. I don't know, dude. Do you have like some sort of security extension system? It it yeah, you did have to refresh rather than just well, page. Huh. Yeah, that's that's uh that's keep pretty much demo. Keep this demo up because we need to bring this to uh, high schools. Okay. I do I, I will probably nuke this database, but <laughs> go back to the default. Nuke the database. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta destroy the database. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I can't. I can't have that. This. This on here. I can't. We can't show this to high school. Obviously. The high school. As you sit there and highlight it on the YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <as> I, <laughs> yeah. I gotta delete this. I mean, I yeah. Delete this. I gotta. Yeah. I gotta delete this right here. <laughs> I'm only. Uh, exercising it. Let me show people what we got around. All right. Yeah. So that's the end of uh, my stuff. Again, all those links and stuff. If you want to read more. Oh, actually, I did have one more slide. That's true. Um. Uh. Let's see. Oh, nope, that's, we've already seen that. Um, I, these are some cool links. The Wikipedia article on XSS sort of gives a, not, it doesn't get, it gets a little technical, but not too technical. It's pretty nice. OWASP gets crazy, crazy technical. Theirs is really good. And also Troy Hunt's a really cool guy. He's written about XSS a bit. So 
Read his blog, it's great. And uh, that's it. All right, I will hand it over to AJ now. Cool, yeah. And there's one more thing I want to show you guys before we leave. Click on the tab, that, this one, yeah. So uh, as of today, we now have a running server on the 10th floor of Rhodes that, yeah, you can keep it minimized. All right. Yeah, uh, that we can use now to spin up as many VMs as we like, you know, or containers, a lot more containers than we could VMs. Um, so, you know, the goal of this is that we can start giving everybody in the chapter their own VM so that we can now not only do cross-site scripting vulnerabilities like this, but we can also give you a VM to actually perform the exploits um, and actually see the vulnerabilities in action. Uh, so this is this, this is gonna be huge. With this, we can integrate it with our Rapids equipment, which that has hit a whole nother uh, wall, apparently, because it now has to be recertified. And since the money's coming from Ohio bonds, they need to do a bunch of legal work on how they can spend it. So Rapids equipment's gonna be pushed off, but we have this for the meantime. And if anybody else is interested, and helping me out, um, that'd be awesome. We're gonna be hosting the CTF for Revolution UC on uh, VM uh, on our server up there. And if anybody is wanting to check it out, you know, feel free to stop by if you're going to the hackathon, or uh, you know, just let me know. We can meet up before then. And we should mess with Franco's products on there. We can mess with Franco's all we want, dude. <laughs> we have the admin rights. <laughs> All right, so with that, I mean, that's all. Uh, sign up for our sports. If you have it, how many people do we have left? Do we still need two? Come on, guys. Sign up. Um, and yeah, good luck with midterms. This is what you've been working for, right? And I can help you with the uh, I can help you with the, the recon slides that's getting into my realm. That's like what we did at uh is it, is it like what you did at so we so we did for uh Franco's service. Is this class? Yeah. You, you were there the whole time, man. You fucking went hard. We were hard, we were trying to Dude, I had to like re authenticate my SSRP the other day. I was so scared. Oh, you gotta re authenticate this, that question of emails. I had to re authenticate it. Oh, that was right. Yeah, I almost did it. I re authenticated it. I took it with my ass. Yeah, yeah. You had to do it with my real ass.